Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope that all of you are having a great start to your week. Uh, for a lot of you, it's been crazy. Um, as much of as people spend time on the internet uh, and surfing and using uh, social media platforms, even like the one you watch in the video on, to have the largest of those uh, platforms shut down and all of its uh, subsidiaries as well. I think WhatsApp and Instagram went down almost simultaneously with Facebook. I just want to talk real briefly about that with you. But I do want to remind you, uh, first and foremost, show your love and support by supporting the work we do at the Odyssey Project. There will always be a link in the description box uh, for you to easily find a way to give, whether it's through our site, or directly through our processor, or by sending it, sending it to our Cash App account. But the work we do in the community does cost, and we're asking you to continue us uh, to uh, continue to support us. On another note, uh, don't forget, uh, I'm in the midst of writing book number 25. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with this, uh, this, this, this title, but the name of the title right now is Chasing the Ghost, The Quest for Black Wealth in America. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not, but as of right now, that's it. And what I'm doing is I'm offering everyone an opportunity to sponsor some space in the book to pay tribute to whoever they want to pay tribute to. Parents, mentors, teachers, uh, significant others, or even celebrate something that they've accomplished themselves. Uh, there's no minimum sponsorship. The information of exactly how it goes and what you need to do is in the description box. I would love to have uh, you be in the book paying tribute to uh, some special person and, you know, having it uh, published and in print uh, for, forever. Um, just some way that I want, you know, to, uh, want you to be a part of this and at the same time uh, help support and promote it. All right, that's that. Now, Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp down simultaneously from what I understand it's global uh, to what extent I don't know uh, but I know that uh, no one that I've talked to uh, ha has access I haven't been really calling people but you know when people talk about it you know one of the first things that pop up when you talk to someone but I haven't really uh, been like polling people but you know it's it's all on I mean it's, you go to other other form, uh, platforms and it's streaming uh, you go on Twitter, they're talking about it. You go and pull up Facebook on a Google search, and it's telling you everything that's wrong. Now, this is why I'm coming up. Uh, in case you didn't know, uh, a person who was a project manager, a products uh, manager um, for Facebook, uh, resigned back in April, stayed for an additional month, and during that month, she started collecting data on things she saw and now her 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 perspective is she thinks Facebook can be this awesome great place where people can share their opinions connect and uh, information can be shared but right now she says Facebook isn't being forthcoming about what they know for instance I know for a fact that Facebook had um, documents 
uh, from research that they had done, they had done that showed them that Instagram was harmful to teenage girls uh, in a number of different ways. They sit on that because Instagram is the, 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 the investment in Instagram was solely for the purpose of reaching the younger audience that was fading on Facebook. And they've done a great job at uh, keeping the attention of these youngsters, but at what price? Uh, and I've talked about that. Marion and I, Marion and I have talked about it. Uh, the importance of managing your child's screen time, as well as managing what they are able to see on their devices, and so much more. Uh, young girls and boys are being recruited for human and sex trafficking, uh, pro and, and, and so much, and so many other things. Uh, they are being groomed by older men to be manipulated and exploited. Uh, these are things that we know are happening. These are things that have been doing pretty much openly. Uh, if you just pay attention, it's out there. It's not some clandestine subculture. Now, a lot of people are talking about uh, this being a DNS issue, uh, a DNS issue with Facebook because Facebook uh, supposedly supports all three of their main uh, main entities, which is WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook itself, the namesake, on the same server system, which I would think would be absolutely ludicrous, but that's what they're saying. And what all the DNS is, is, is your uh, domain name uh, service, or your, do your domain name system. Uh, basically, how you point and direct people to your site. Your DNS can work a bunch of different ways. You can have it point to any server you choose. Uh, you can have other domains point to one domain. It's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Uh, that's why you can go to multiple do domain names and end up at the same domain because those other domains are pointed by way of the DNS system to those domains. So uh, I don't think it's a DNS thing. Uh, what I actually think is uh, this same woman who blew the whistle and share these documents, I believe, if it were not mistaken, with the New York Times. Uh, this same person was on, uh, I want to say 60 Minutes last night talking about uh, what she found in, 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 in some pretty damning uh, documents and information about what Facebook knows, how Facebook is censoring, how Facebook isn't properly managing uh, through algorithms. Um, just a bunch of different things that, that Facebook is doing and I think uh, the power they have because of their massive uh, reach has made them feel uh, invincible and they're pretty much doing what they want to do. Okay, so um, what I think it is, is this same woman is going uh, before uh, Congress to testify about what she discovered and what's going on with Facebook. And, you know, Facebook has had a number of run-ins with the U.S. government uh, where uh, Mark Zuckerberg has had to show up and give an account, if you really want to call it, give an account. Now, I'm not real big on Senate uh, committee hearings or Congre congressional hearings. Uh, any of that, to me, it's a bunch of uh, dog and pony shows where they seem to care about what's going on they put up a good front they grill the person uh and, and make it seem like they're being real tough but no real action is taken uh that's what i'm used to so i don't get excited because somebody's going up but what i do think is they uh she's definitely got facebook nervous especially when she's gone to the uh securities and exchange commission and asked for whistleblower protection uh which means there are some things that are probably going to come out that are huge. I know that there have been some things that several people have weighed on who will have a, a say in what's going to happen with this, have weighed in and saying that these are bombshells that they are being uh, tossed as they look at these documents. So she's going to give clarity to those documents on tomorrow. I would say Facebook is shutting down now, switching servers, changing servers, wiping servers. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised as when it when it goes back up a lot of what used to be in your personal content uh history will be gone as a part of the wipe not that they were personally trying to wipe your stuff but they're going to have in order to wipe the massive amount of data that's on these servers they're going to have to create algorithm wipes and where certain things 
will automatically be cued to be wiped and some things are going to get caught up in there that may not necessarily be in there but definitely uh, I don't think this is coincidence that the day before a congressional hearing about your company, your company all of a sudden crashes. Uh, and then what they'll do is they'll probably play the victim. You know, it was an outside job. I mean, you know, uh, Facebook is one of the safest places. Not that there's nothing that is unhackable. Nothing is unhackable. But, you know, for someone to get into Facebook, at right, you know, at the very moment that they're under scrutiny and there's about to be this huge testimony, uh, that's a little bit too much of a coincidence. So I, I'm really thinking that, hey, look, something's popped off. They're trying to cover their tracks as much as they possibly can, and they're using the downtime to completely keep anybody else away from. See, if they, they could wipe those with algorithms while it's up, but it would still be accessible, meaning that somebody could get into it and be retrieving information while they're getting rid of it. And so the way to shut that down is make it completely inaccessible. From what I understand, that even their workplace uh, intranet isn't working. So that's definitely sounds like an inside gig. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about it. What I want to talk about is, are we prepared uh, to do our own thing? Are we prepared to move? Because I tell you what, a lot of people uh, who are doing well for themselves are doing well because they're leveraging what they do on social media, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook. Facebook is still considered one of the best branding tools available. Uh, Instagram is considered one of the best scaling tools. So two of the best tools for business online owned by Facebook. Now, obviously, Google is the Internet juggernaut uh, but Facebook isn't far behind and so I mean you think about it, Google Google owns the two largest search engines in the world Google search and YouTube uh, most people don't see YouTube as a search engine but that's exactly what it is a search engine that primarily uh, highlights videos but it's a search engine and it's the second largest one in the world larger than Bing Yahoo isn't even considered a search engine anymore so the thing is what are we prepared to do we are good at talking we love to show up and listen we love to uh, have debates and and dialogues and talk about all the things that are wrong have intellectual uh, uh, confrontations and and, and, and standoffs about everything, but what are we really truly prepared to do? Because what's going on with Facebook is just a small portion of what's happening and how we are being manipulated as a people. Now, when I say manipulated, I'm not just talking about black people. But you know me, I'm black first. So it's always going to be black first. I'm always going to take care of my people, think about my people, move for my people. And it has cost me. But that's just it. We need people to be able to do that. We're so selfish that the moment our love for our people begins to cost us, we back off of it and we start to, 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 to romance our pockets. And I am very much attuned to what I need to do to provide for my family for future generations. And I'm working on that feverishly. But it will not come at the sacrifice of my people. I will not exploit my people to enrich myself um, and my family because to me that would be blood money. Uh, you know, do I expect to be paid for certain things? I think that if I'm providing a service of value, I have a right to be compensated for it. I'm bringing something to the table and I'm asking something in return. That's called fair exchange. Uh, but what I'm talking about is sitting up and know, putting your people in situations where you know they're going to be harmed or they're going to be exploited or, uh, or mishandled. Uh, it's a far too common and we need to really be aware of that uh, we talk about so many things we do very little and so my thing is I want us to really truly develop uh, a plan and, and if you go to the Odyssey Project site www.theodysseyproject21.top and go over to programs and services and hover over it when it drops down go to, go to the blueprint 1.0 
Just click on the Blueprint 1.0. I worked on that for years. I consulted some major, major people over the years, that include Dr. Claude Anderson, Dr. Boris Watkins, Dr. Umar Johnson, uh, Tariq Nasheed, um, um, uh, name is slipping me, slipping right now. But I, I reached out to people who are experts in their fields, and I got their input. Uh, I really used my my knowledge and experience to put together that blueprint is called 1.0 because I'm looking for other people to bring their minds together to create 2.0 to, to expand it to to look at it man it, it, it goes in depth and I, I would love for you to go over there and check that out it's not just about I'm not just a person that jumps up and talks on YouTube YouTube is actually a venture off of my day when I'm doing videos, that's a venture off of my day. That's me sharing uh, what I have learned or my uh, perspective on something because I believe it will shed light on something. But for every hour segment, you get to see me uh, in front of a camera. There are countless hours doing research that I pay for, analyzing that research, disseminating that research, writing, uh, whether it be in uh, academic articles, whether it be in prose articles, whether it be in publications, whether it be in a book, which I've written 24 of and I'm currently writing book 25. I'm currently working to do these things. So when I sit up and I bring things to you, I'm not bringing to them as an anecdotal superficial observation. I'm taking years and years of me really truly just diving into this. You know, I'm the person that came and, and, and brought up the, uh, psychopathology as a legacy of slavery in, in, in uh, Born in Captivity. When I wrote Born in Captivity, I unleashed that. I'm the one that talked about epigenetics and psychology on a, on a level that you haven't heard it talked about in the black community and as a means of uh, per perpetuating uh, multi-generational uh, transmission of trauma. And I, on and on and on. The thing is, what are we going to do with what's happening? You know, I'm not here for intellectual uh, gratification or to have my intellectual ego stroked. I'm good with just knowing who I am and what I'm capable of. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm awesome. I don't need anybody to tell me I'm good. You know, when people pay me a, pay, pay me a compliment, I appreciate it and, and, and it actually is an authentic appreciation because I believe if it comes from the heart from you, uh, then, you know, I, I, I receive it, but I don't have to have it. It's not something that's going to determine whether or not I'm good with me. Whether or not I'm good with me is going to be determined by how much I've given of myself to my passion when I leave this place. You know, my goal is to leave this place on empty. I tell people all the time, I'm going to die on E. And that's going to be because I'm going to wake up every day and give every bit of me to what I have to do that day. That's my businesses. That's my wife. That's my family. That's my love for my people. And all of those things are going to go every day hard in the paint. What I want to see is my people standing with me. I want to see other people out there coming in, joining in. If, if, if What's your expertise? What are you good at? What can you lend? What do you see that I'm working on that you can give some give some insight into or maybe correct me on? Uh, I'm not a know-it-all, you know, uh, despite what you might think by the things that I've done or whatever. Uh, my things are my accomplishments and they were done for me. They weren't do done to lord over anybody. Anybody that'll tell you, uh, I have people who, perp and I know they did it when they first came around me, purposely uh, called me by my first name or refused to uh, acknowledge me as doctor. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, you do you. I mean, that's something I did for me. I didn't do it for everybody else. I did that for me. That wasn't about any proving to anything to anybody but me. I wanted to conquer something. I did that, so it's mine. And most of the people who know me don't call me doctor anyway. You know. But what I do want is to see us do better than what we're doing. I want to see us really rise up. There's so much going on. Uh, this Facebook thing is just one thing. There's so much going on. Man, I, I, got, I got a big one to talk about uh, as far as censorship, and I can't talk about it on this channel. So I'm going to get that set up, and I'm going to 
uh, let you guys know where you can go check it out. But it's crazy stuff going on on all these platforms. And you got to be aware of what's going on because it's going to impact you. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Great Reset. Uh, but I'm going to be talking about the Great Reset, especially when we're talking about in this book, talking about uh, black wealth building. Uh, we need to find out what the Great Reset is and we need to find out how it's going to impact our quest for building black wealth in America and understand why it's being done and what can be done to stop it. And, you know, it's so much to learn and understand. And we've got to stop being played. We've got to stop being played. Today I shared, um, matter of fact, I'm going to end it with what I shared. I shared this on a number of different platforms. I think I shared it even before Facebook went down. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. I'm just read, read to you real quickly and then I'll be done. But I want to show, and it says, uh, and you probably heard this story or not, but I'm going to tell you why it's, why it's powerful when I finish. It says, have you ever heard the story of the five monkeys experiment? It may sound familiar when you think of your organizational culture. It goes like this. Five monkeys were placed in a cage as a part of an experiment. In the middle of the cage was a ladder with bananas on the top rung. Every time a monkey tried to climb the ladder, the experimenter sprayed all of the monkeys with ice water. Eventually, each time a monkey started to climb the ladder, the other monkeys would pull him down and beat him to a pulp so that they could avoid the icy spray. Soon, no monkey dared to climb up that ladder. The experimenter then substituted one of the monkeys in the cage for a new monkey. The first thing the new monkey did was try to climb the ladder to reach the bananas. After several beatings, the new monkey learned the social norm. He never knew why the other monkeys wouldn't let him go up the, for the bananas because he had never been sprayed with the ice water. But he quickly learned that this behavior would not be tolerated by the other monkeys. One by one, each of the original monkeys in the cage was substituted for a new monkey until none of the original group remained. Yet every time a new monkey went up the ladder, the rest of the group pulled him down and beat the crap out of him. Uh, so, and, and you have to keep in mind that none of these monkeys had ever been sprayed with the ice water. One by one, each monkey's each of the monkeys in the cage was substituted a new monkey until none of the originals. I think I already read it. By the end of the experiment, the five monkeys in the cage had learned to follow the rule, don't go for the bananas, without any of them knowing the reason why. We'll get, you know, they, they never knew they would get sprayed with ice water. They simply knew you don't go for the bananas. If we were... If we could have asked the monkeys for their rationale behind letting their cage mates climb the ladder, the answer would probably be, I don't know. That's just how things have always been. This story, whether real or fable, captures a pervasive theme in many organizational cultures. We tend to do things the way we were told they always have been done without questioning or revisiting the reason behind it, even long after the reason has ceased to exist. Many of the people in your periphery are demanding that you remain in the box. Or they're demanding that you are they are demanding that you are compliant. They are demanding that things go back to the way they've always been. And I tell people all the time, for people who have complained for literally eons about how the, the, the U.S. has treated them, how the U.S. has oppressed them, how the U.S. has manipulated and controlled and kept them down, it amazes me that now the system is under, under stress and struggle. You're begging for it to go back to the way it is. That's because we fight change. We fight anything that's beyond what we see as the norm. We are moving in a way away from anything that challenges the status quo because the status quo is what we're used to. It doesn't matter that what we're used to isn't good for us. We're used to it. We don't want change. Anyone that pushes change has to be discredited, has to be punished, has to be put back in their place. Why? Because you're challenging the status quo and you're challenging what I believe to be okay for me. I would rather sit up and be at the bottom of the wrong than to challenge it and go up the wrong and find out that I'm going to get sprayed with ice water. So what do I do? I make it my business to put you troublemakers back in your place. There's nothing more powerful than having 
people that you want to control police one another. You don't even have to do anything. All you got to do is set the norm. Set the standard. Spray the first group with ice water. And, the, and they will train the rest of the group to never try to get out of the box. Think about that. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, i got other things that I need to get to, but I had to come to you guys today. Uh, this is the start of a brand new uh, thing. October's real special. And I really, really, truly am excited about what's going to happen, but it's going to take a whole lot of work. And uh, got to kind of knock out the box a little bit today, but we're going to get right back in and finish up the day strong. Uh, don't forget, support the work we're doing. We need you. Um, also, if, you, if, if, if you're feeling it and you want to be a part of what I'm doing with this book, especially with The Great Reset uh, on deck, this book is going to be huge. Uh, I'm really excited about it. The book is going to be huge. Um, uh, so you can uh, sponsor a space in that book. That's basically what I'm saying. If you want to sponsor a space in that book, um, and you can sponsor as big of a space as you want. Uh, you can even go as far as uh, doing a sponsorship where you can actually submit a picture of the person you want to sponsor. But there's no minimum. You can do as little as 50 cents. If you want to do a 50 cents, you can do a paragraph. Put your name, pay tribute to who you want to pay to with a, with a paragraph. And there's no minimum for that. But if you want to go and you want to really do it, you can do it big. And it's going to be in that book and your name will be next to it. But that's up to you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys keep us lifted here because we're going hard. And this month is a very important month for us. Keep us lifted. Keep me lifted because I'm pushing myself. It's probably as hard as I have over the last year and a half since I had those heart attacks. And so I, I, I'm trying to make sure I stay in there. But that's some things I really got to get done. I've got to get it done for me. I've got to get it done for my family. I've got to get it done for my people. So y'all guys stay with me on that. I'm out of here. One love. Yeah, yeah.